Alan? Um, Alan? Alan? Uh. <laughs> um, the Alan? Uh, uh, Alan? Alan? Alan! Bernard, what on earth have you well, done? I didn't touch it, Alan. It just came on. Oh, Alan, no. I didn't. Honestly, I swear. Not to worry, but it's remote control. I was in the kitchen. I thought oh. I could be all right. <laughs> <laughs> that that you did. <laughs> it's all right. I can. I uh, busted. Yeah, yeah, I can stop it just by pressing that. You see, when I press that, it. Um, yeah. Well, obviously, um, it stops when it runs out. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. Well, I'm sorry, Cameron, but if you remember, you said I could come round and see the Maltese Falcon, so I. Oh, in. I'm sorry, Bernard. I recorded Citizen Kane over it. Oh, it's all right. I haven't seen that either. Uh, yes. Then I put the snooker on over that. Um. There's the weather at the end. We could watch that. <laughs> it's not today's, but... Um... Well, not to worry. Uh, what were the films like? Oh, well, you see, that's the great plus with this unit, Bernard. You don't actually have to watch the films at all in order to record over them. <laughs> well, perhaps if you kept more than one cassette, then you could store them and, and watch them later. No, no, you see, you can't put more than one cassette in at the same time. That's the great minus with this unit, Bernard. Um, I've got something on here. That'll give you an idea of the quality. After the Great War of 1939, a ravaged and divided Europe lay in flames. From the smoking hulk of the exhausted and once proud Great Britain arose a new breed of men and women who were to take history in their bare hands and remake it in their own image. From the ashes they rose, answering the silent call of their fellows, their eyes blank and pitiless as the sun, fixed upon the hallowed goal of a new Jerusalem, a new England. This is the story of two such adventurers in the halls of destiny, two shapers of human clay slaving in the kilns of fate, Alan and Bernard. Pretty quiet engine, huh? Yeah, we've actually stalled at this point, Bernard. It's an added safety <laughs> factor. You two all right in the back? Yes, fine. I'm not going too fast for you, am I? Not at the moment, Alan, no. How about you, Tim? Oh, Tim's a seasoned traveller, aren't you, Tim? I often let him take over on country lanes. Eh? Is that why you had your licence taken away, Bernard? I didn't have it taken away, Sue. I just lost it, that's all. Uh, in the school playground, I think it was. What were you doing in the school playground? Uh, about 45. <laughs> <laughs> I should be there in no time now. I must say, I can't wait to get out onto that court. Yeah. Been admiring your in-car audio system, Alan. Well, the stereo. Mm. Yeah, there are storage problems, but I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with the reproduction. Reproduction? Oh, I thought it was genuine. <laughs> Now, uh, pass me my sunglasses, Sue, would you? We've cleared the town. I think I'm ready to drive. This kind of lick doesn't seem to bother her at all, Alan. Uh, no, but I like to think the designers had me in mind when they put this ship together. I drive a heart into the limit, but I drive safely. I think Sue will bear me out in that, won't you, Sue? Just keep your eyes on the road, Alan. Don't you worry, lovey. I'll get you there all right and tight. What do you run her on, Alan? I give her £30 a week housekeeping. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's two or three star, but she just sips at it. What sort of rate? About 16 kilometres a litre. 16 kmpl? Yeah. <laughs> That's good, is it? <laughs> I think we ought to turn right here. I think Alan knows what he's doing, Tim. Don't you bank on it, Bernard. <laughs> yeah. No, it's all right, bless you, and Tim. There's another turning up ahead. I thought that had been close. I think it has, actually, Alan. It'd be nice to get to the court sometime this calendar month. You're in my hands, Susie Woozy Pet. Don't fight it. We can take the road past the links. OK. Right, that'll be £1.50. So, if you take that off the £25, that means you owe me £23.50. Hey, congratulations. You just got yourself a great insurance policy. I'll have my office call you. <laughs> hey, I was gone thinking about a pension. <laughs> this man is an insurance salesman, or bastard. Hi, I'm Peter. Hey, what's the similarity between me and a pelican with eyes on the back of its head? I'd like to see my bill. Great gag, eh? Got it off a New York carry. Also, I'd like a bigger car to get back to Bahrain tonight and to make 15 calls to Aberdeen, Scotland, but that's the kind of guy I am. Sugar. Oh, hi! I'm Peter! You've bought the policy. Now see the film, Claws. The horror of a community terrorized by a killer bastard. What do you think would happen if...
and you died tomorrow. It seems so stupid for just a few pounds. Will your kids say, why are we so poor since Daddy went to heaven? Only this morning I drove past the car. Insurance salesmen are the pot noodles of the human race. You will try them once and wish you hadn't. What's my life in here? Repeat as necessary. Here I go again. Program me for pleasure. Feel my heart to cry. Play with my old mental. Delete my override. Stimulate my memory. Expand my frequency Alternate my way Program change of key Please increase my pulse width Shape my envelope Integrate my circuits Can my resistors go? Oscillate my signal Modulate my random play To the depth of my filter Attack, release, decay Disconnect my circuits of course was the irresistible sister resistor performance art or expensive electronic engineering the controversy will continue you can decide for yourselves all next week at the millionaire club and now we devote the rest of the program to a filmed report on the current festival of Eurodance at the body shop part of peterborough's new workplace and day center one of the most exciting groups to have emerged is the Strom Theatre Dance Dance Theatre from Strom, under the direction of the much-noticed Padura Copa Sangue. Ranolf Whiteshaft managed to catch up with them in rehearsal at the happening space of Peterborough's new community care care centre. Grow, hop, wiggle, jet, feet, grow. We talked first to Peterborough's complex director and arts amenity administrator, Simon Newby. Does he see this visit as being a shot in the arm for Peterborough's cultural expansion? Yes, um, surely. We were all very excited when the chance arose for the Strom Theatre Company to come uh, and share our facilities during the period of the festival. Um, I like what they had to offer me. Um, they like what we had to offer them. And I was able to turn around to them and say, yes, look, um, we can do business here. All right? It's something new and exciting in Peterborough, certainly. Not that Peterborough needs anything new and exciting, no way. Um, there's enough that's new and exciting in Peterborough to keep us all off the streets for many a good long year. Um, not that there's any cause to be kept off the streets in Peterborough. Uh, all of them know uh, they're amongst the newest, most interesting, exciting and vital thrusting streets that we have in Europe at the present. Uh, and do you see this as being an important step forward for Peterborough's links with Europe? Surely, Ranulph, surely. What I see it as um, is part of a chain reaction that, even as we speak, is beginning to flower and blossom all over Peterborough. Here we see the visiting company being put through their paces by Strom's top dance director. Strom's style is certainly very distinctive and the discipline very foreign to actors schooled in the English method. I asked Padura Copasangui, who incidentally speaks no English, why Peterborough? 
We were initially very impressed with Peterborough's rail and communication links with East Anglia and the Midlands, together with the friendly and welcoming atmosphere that goes to make up the Peterborough effect. Van, Van Groot, Van Groot, Van Groot, Van Groot. I'll pop it in the seventh and writer. Oh, team. Is it going to go to Alan? Travel did. Travel did, no. Travel did gross. Well, well, I'll tell Metal. The play Copa Sangui is tackling is called Yabil, or the Movelweight Slip Mash. Essentially, in three parts, Yabil charts the downward path into personal destruction of the play's central character, Yabil Spingbotens, who finds himself unable to come to terms with his love on the one hand for Clober, an immigrant took, and on the other for Kushensev, a yogurt who stands for the play's central theme of survival by compromise. Here, Yabil arrives home for supper. So, can a tunusana may? Oh, ha! Main gross. Ken lover. Sick. Main gross. Librea Muni has been with the Strom Company for more than 12 years. What does she feel that Yabil has to offer a British audience? Bollops. Peter Bollops is a similar culture of growth. That is why we are here. Yabil is a play about people, for people, by a person. There are people in Peterborough. Trevor Bollops. And so I think Yabil has a lot to offer, just as Peterborough has a lot to offer. Drilling through it and follow it. Mm -hmm. uh... Trouble did. Ming. A lot to offer, certainly. But how do the people of Peterborough react to the new dramatic discipline that the Strom Theatre embodies? Simon Newby. Even now, we are finalising uh, preparations for our own tour in the autumn of Strom, uh, when we'll be presenting them with our Rumpelstiltskin. Though, of course, as you probably know, uh, Peterborough is twin community, not with Strom as such, but in fact with Hevel Spending. Mm. And are the facilities over there on a par with those here in Peterborough? <laughs> Ranulph, I could talk to you um, all year about uh, Peterborough's community uh, recreational and facility dimensions vis-à-vis -vis the rest of Europe. Um, as you probably know, as the world knows indeed, we finished our own community centre and Frisbee Drome just recently, which you could put alongside any in Europe, uh, though that would make it further to get to, obviously, which would be an inconvenience that we're not prepared to countenance at this stage. Um, our tennis courts alone provide uh, an obvious link with the next item, Alan and Bernard, um, which we may or may not take up uh, as the whim evokes. I close the door after you, Tim. There's a hell of a draft in here. <laughs> So, uh, what say the two of us partner up then, Bernard? Good eh? idea, Alan, why not? Uh, you two don't mind playing together, do you? Yeah, it'll be fun. We'll try and keep the pace down, won't we, Al? God knows <laughs> I'll try, Bernard. Uh, tell you what, give us your racket, I'll toss for ends. Oh, righto. That's a beauty you're holding there, Alan. Took me through school and polio, that did Yeah, you? rough or smooth? Oh, I'm used to the white fluffy ones, actually. Rough or smooth <laughs> side of the racket. <laughs> oh, either. Mind. Rough or smooth? Smooth. <laughs> All right, we'll take this end then, shall we? Uh, do, you, do you mind playing that end? Sorry? Do you mind playing that end? No, lovely, thank you. Got no sense of advantage, have they, Bernard? Let's see if we're going to have to play this one chivalrously. Yeah. What's Tim like as a player? Well, frankly, I'm disappointed, Adam. I've taught him everything I know about the game and he knows nothing. Unadventurously pedestrian is the word I'd use. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the net's a good couple of inches out of true, but it's going to have to do, I'm afraid. Um, Alan, you wouldn't have a spare racket, would you? Christ, I don't know, Bernard. I tend to use them all for tactical reasons. Yeah. What sort of weight? Oh, you know. Uh, uh, tension? Yeah, it's a slight headache. I think it's the sun. <laughs> Care over the choice of rackets is the hallmark of the professional, Bernard. You do play tennis, don't you? Alan, I don't play tennis. I fight it. Uh, right, well, quick knock up, then Tim can serve. Yeah.
Ah, uh, I'll let that one go, but watch that foot fault next time, Tim, OK? <laughs> court play, all right? Forty, love. <laughs> Bernard? <laughs> no, Bernard. <laughs> 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 I must say, I think they were right to leave them on their own. They can have a much slower game between themselves. <laughs> I don't mind telling you I felt like a caged tiger out there this afternoon, Bernard. Same here. Really? Uh, I mean, that kind of percentage tennis is all very well. I mean, that, that kind of baseline, all-court, point-winning play. But in the end, percentages just aren't enough. It was seven sets to love, Alan. Yeah, it was 100%, sure. But the point is that Tim doesn't really have any tactical overview of the game, at least as far as I understand it. I'm strictly serve and volley power tennis. I'm sorry, Bernard, but I, I like to play my shots, work my openings, and I'm sorry if that's treading on any toes, but there we are. Oh, same here, me too. Serve and volley. Oh, no, Bernard, I don't think so, really. <laughs> well, so it was a lucky escape coming out of the club, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I managed to think with my feet there, Bernard. That doubly clutch kicked us through out of trouble. Mm. Still, we were lucky. I mean, let's control these bracing fights. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing 15 miles an hour, I'm no judge. Ladies and gentlemen, WC Television, in association with the Department of Justice, proudly presents Supreme Court 13. And now, let's go live over to Judge Murchison. Thank you. Welcome along to Supreme Court for what I'm sure will turn out to be one hell of a trial. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with cable TV, let me briefly explain how the trial works. You should have in front of you three buttons. One for not guilty, one for the Court of Appeal, and one for the electric chair. Um, let me remind you that this is not a game. This is a real trial with real people really dying. Really. Okay. So, without any further ado, let me introduce the two attorneys who have come along to do battle, and let's play Supreme Court. Uh, what is your name, please? Susan Harmon. For the District Attorney's Office, prosecuting Susan Harmon. Welcome along, sir. 
Tell me, Sue, uh, are you nervous? A little. A little nervous. I love that. That's good. Okay, and for the defense. Rod, Sam Rod. Sam Rod. Sam, of course. <laughs> Sam is uh, no stranger to the Supreme Court. The uh, defendant is sadly unable to be with us as he is not a member of American Equity. Uh, but for those of you watching in black and white, the defendant is black and we are all white. Isn't that right, Sue? Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's good. Relax a little. Okay, Sue, if you'd like to call your first witness now, please. Okay, I'd like to call Dr. Ludovic Klotz. The first witness is a psychopathologist. A psychopathologist. Dr. Klutz, if you'd like to just step in there, place your hand on the TV set and swear to tell the truth. Sue, off you go. Uh, you are Dr. Ludovic Klutz. <laughs> Oh, oh, my goodness, we have an objection. What is your objection, Sam? The prosecution is leading the witness. Yes, I can accept that. Objection oh. sustained. Okay, uh, Dr. Klotz, who are you? Oh. <laughs> your Honor, that is blatant harassment of the witness. I'm simply establishing who he is. You mean you don't know who he is? Of course I do. Oh, so he doesn't know who he is. Of course he does. If I didn't establish his identity, you would simply question it. You're damn golly right I would. There seems to be a deal of confusion over this witness already, Your Honor. Wow, Sam is really cooking tonight. Rod like Sue, <laughs> meeting a very on-form Sam Rudge. Okay, things really beginning to warm up now. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Sam's cross-examination. Join us then. <laughs> Hi, um, welcome back to Supreme Court. Sam, your witness. Dr. Klutz, if that really is your name. Are you a practicing homosexual? Oh, Objects! Oh, sugar! Sorry, Sue. Difficult, isn't it? <laughs> Dr. Klutz, you must answer that question. Are you a faggot? No. No, oh, come, come now, Dr. So-called Klutz. You don't expect us to believe that, do you? Your son is a ballet dancer, is he not? Oh, no, my daughter is a ballet dancer. You're splitting hairs now, Dr. <laughs> for the sake of argument, Klutz. What makes you think the defendant is, as you term it, dangerously unbalanced? Oh, well, I have observed the oh, defendant. Oh, you've observed him, have you? And you consider yourself to be an observant man, do you, Doctor? I do. What color are my eyes? Blue. You're playing guessing games now, Doctor. <laughs> A man's life is at stake here, and you're playing hokey for nokey. And what kind of man? Did old Hawkeye Klutz get around to noticing the color of his skin? Well, he's black. Oh, he's black, is he? Yes, I kind of thought that might be dragged into the conversation there long. Would you care to tell the court, Dr. Klutz, how you stand vis-a-vis -vis black people? Ooh. No, I dare say you wouldn't, because you know and I know, do we not, Dr. Klutz, that you have personally given evidence against 47 black persons, of whom 62 were later sentenced to life in prison with their summary execution. Uh, why, yes, but I've also testified against many hundreds of Caucasians. You rat fink. I put it to you, Dr. Klutz, that your evidence here this afternoon has been nothing more than a farrago of tissues dreamt up by you and your illiterate gay friends at a Zionist meeting of the Ku Klux Klan. No! No? What do you mean, no? Dr. Klutz, this is a court of law. We are not here to quibble over facts. Uh, however, I'm going to have to stop the vote there because it's make your mind up time. Uh, Sam, back to your booth. Dr. Klutz, thank you for your evidence. You may step down. Time for the viewers at home to decide whether McLeod should be freed or fried. You will notice that Sam is ahead on the objection stakes, but the verdict is very much at your fingertips. Okay, press those buttons now, please. Ah, geez, the guy's got it coming to him. This creep is gonna fry. Well, they shouldn't be long now. No, they must have bags of energy left for jogging back at the pace they play. Mm. I wonder what's on the tube. I'll shift over, Bernard. Would you do this reclining? is a bit tricky unless you've got the knack. Probably safer if I take it. Oh, right here. All right, that's better. Oh. Well, what a pair of prized prats, eh? <laughs> We know some people just like that. Yeah. Absolutely extraordinary. Well, it was very well observed. Mm. That's the thing about satire, you see, is they can expose people like that. Right, they were so instantly recognisable, well, weren't they? they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a tiger, isn't it? Hello, Hi. Sue, Tim. Hello. Where have you two been? What do you mean, where have we been? Finishing our singles match after you two left. So you've smashed up the car again, Alan? What's on the box? Oh, no, no, don't, don't turn it on, Sue. Why on earth not? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know, but don't, all the same. 
Alan, I'm switching that television on because I cannot take any more of your behaviour after this afternoon. The two of you were like a pair of five-year-olds on the court today. Absolute five-year-olds. I mean, Ben and I, can't, why can't you accept the fact that you can't play tennis anymore? I mean, Ben's been playing since he was six or something. You stopped playing when you were five. I mean, what's the problem? <laughs> what have you been doing? I told you I was going to be doing something today. Did you bring the bathroom out of the room? I suppose you did. I you know, it's probably something you could you could come out and design a thing too. And since you've managed now to learn how to boil an egg, you can boil the corner of the corner of the Absolute mess. I told you I was going to cook something tonight. Why did you never listen to anything I say? What was it with you this afternoon? I mean, why can't you accept that Ben has been playing tennis since he was six? I mean, you stopped when you were five, for God's sake. Why can't you accept it? Yeah.